started. So, hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. We are checking out Caliber Corner number 11 today. We're going to talk about the basics of long distance shooting. We got a few little uh, issues we want to discuss before we get into that. But first, let's see who's hanging out with us. On the YouTube side, we've got Water Gunner. He's hanging out with us over there. Usually, we got a few more people. We might be a couple minutes early, but that's okay. This is kind of a kind of a pre-show chat before we get into the uh, long distance discussion. Over on the Gun Channel side, we got Jake hanging out with us, and we got Patrick over there. Grim '90s with us right now on YouTube. And guys, I've got a I've got a good panel with us here today, and we'll have a few more guests showing up as we go into the episode. So I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Hey, Wag, what is going on? Hey, how you doing? We're going to talk about reaching out and touching things. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, you got a channel you'd like to promote? Uh, just check out my channel, uh, Awag One Thousand. I do various videos of cars, guns, occasionally video games, which wasn't very re wasn't received very well. So I think I like stop doing that. So yeah, check out my 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 channel. It's basically my profile picture on Hangouts right now. It's the the back of a Toyota. So check okay. that one out. Hey Squib, can you uh can you mute for just a little while? We got some road noise coming through. Is that gonna be okay, buddy? All right, thanks, man. You can come back anytime. Come jump on anytime. Um, Midnight Range TM, also known as the other Travis or just the Travis. What is up, bro? How you doing? Hey, how you doing, guys? What's up? Doing all right, man. Everything's spoke with Ghibli. <laughs> I can't. I can't go wrong with that. <laughs> All right, so man, you want to promote your channel? I've been I've been putting a few tags uh, at the end of my video so people can come check your channel out. What uh, what's it all about? Yeah, I've got a couple of videos up. Not a whole lot yet. You know I me. Mean? I don't right. have a whole lot of I don't have a whole lot of time, but um, yeah, I've got a couple of food, a couple of guns. Um, you know, I'm just trying to do some fun stuff uh, with the food. I'm trying to do some things that people can do at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you said Grim's out there. I can't see the chat, obviously. Again, oh no, that's fine. Phone, yeah, but, yeah, Grim, he's uh, out there. Yep, yeah, we got a lot more I guys. Know, I know too. Grim's wife's been been doing some cooking with my stuff so that's that's pretty cool neat to hear, you know? make the uh the butterscotch uh, recipe or the philly cheesesteaks or what i i think she might have done both i think he said yesterday uh -oh. that she came home with all the cheesesteak stuff for dinner so that's pretty neat sweet man now, i i'm gonna i'm think i might be doing those uh these uh, philly cheesesteaks today i got i'm gonna have a little bit of time later on tonight for dinner i might just have to go that route so yeah, yeah. cool man cool well we, hey we look forward to seeing more videos popping up on your channel so uh squib you want to say hello anything you want to promote uh, yeah, thanks for letting me know about the road noise. For anybody no, who's never, yeah. for anybody out there who's never done a Google Hangout and is interested in getting in there, just be aware that uh, some, depending on how sensitive your mic is, it'll pick up background noise, people talking in the background, the sound of your diesel engine, and whatnot. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Sometimes certain earbuds or headsets will uh, make an echo. I'm gonna put the clutch in here and see if I can quiet down the motor some. Um, so uh, thanks for letting me know about that, Travis. Yeah, I'm going to try to mute back and forth, but I'm holding this with my left hand, so I might be oh, no, it's fine, fingering the mute button here. Um, show I want to promote, uh, Lock and Load, Monday nights, 11 Eastern. Uh, we'll talk about Bitcoin, which isn't real, and uh, North Korea, <laughs> who uh, isn't a threat yet, but maybe one day. And the rest of the time, maybe we'll just talk about uh, military stuff or uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, this uh, Monday, we're going to do um, uh, your favorite war movies and why. So uh, I'm trying to come up with a couple from different uh, different eras myself. Okay, cool. So anybody's welcome to jump in and join. Awesome, awesome. All right, man. Well, I want to appreciate I appreciate you joining in. I know you're on the road, and I know you're a busy guy today. So, But, dude, thank you for coming in, uh, especially on the topic, what we're about to talk about, because my experience with long-distance shooting barely <laughs> – very few times has it gone out beyond uh, 300 yards. Matt is joining us from Never Enough Ammo. Matt, what is going on, man? Welcome. First hey, time hanging up, out with him. Dude, I appreciate it. So what's going on in your neck of the woods? Uh, nothing. Just work. Mm. <laughs> all right man all right cool cool you got a show you want to promote channel you want to, pro you want to promote for any first time viewers out here uh no i'm good <laughs> all right all right it's, it's <laughs> never know famo.com check out guns and geeks uh monday and wednesday night at eight o'clock central right is that what we do yep yeah. all central. right cool man cool appreciate it well matt we are going to talk about a couple little topics real quick before we uh get into the discussion on long distance shooting and so on. And we all have different access to different ranges. So some of us probably have different amounts of experience. So thank you. Night strike is here. Night strike, Tony, we'll get to you eventually. Night strike. You got anything you want to promote, buddy? Welcome. Yeah. Uh, hit or miss Tuesday nights, nine o'clock Eastern. 
Or, awesome. No, 8 Central. 8 Central, 9 Eastern. There we go. That's right. Central time, the only time zone, right? No, fuck yeah. Central. Matt, if you're moving, are you going to lose an hour? You're going to be in mountain time then, aren't you? Uh, Yeah, I'm going to be... Gonna... Well, well, you'll be I, gaining an hour, I guess. Yeah, you could say I'll not be losing, going, yeah. Extra hour yep. of sleep. All right, there you go. <laughs> you get two hours of sleep when we go into the uh, spring ahead or whatever. No, I guess we're going to lose an hour. So anyway, I'll shut up. All right, cool, man. Uh, Tony, Tony, what is up this morning? How you doing, man? I find it curious that yeah. the guy with the least amount of time left on planet Earth being the oldest here, me, okay. gets shoved out there to last. <laughs> I go I go left to right on my side. So you know what? I'm going to make a declaration from here out on a caliber corner. We will start with you. I don't care what order you're in, okay? Well, I'm it's kidding. it's. I think it's your last name. I think it puts us in alphabetical order. That's why it does what it does. But yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, All right. Well, I I, I, I get stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. early watch and good morning gun channels uh, every morning that we can get people to make it on gun channels. Cool, man. A lot of good stuff going on. Always good stuff on gun channels. If you're not a member, if you're not a member yet, you need to get over there and join. It's it's free membership. It's very cool. I love it. Um, okay, I think we had a few more people join in over on the uh, YouTube side. We got O4 Hemi's hanging out with us. Ghost Tactical is listening. Uh, Mad Sexy Man of the Night is here, and it's would you would you be a man Mad Sexy Man of the Morning if it's morning? Anyway, I wonder about that. Uh, Zinger is joining us right now. Again, Grim 90s hanging out with us. See on the gun channel side. Ghost is joining in on the gun channel side also, so he's hanging out on both platforms. Very cool. First thing I want to do is I like to check out a lot of new gun channels. I've, I'm subscribed to like 150 channels. It's crazy. And I discovered a channel last night, and, and the guy's just getting started. Nothing, nothing, nothing fancy, right? Nothing crazy, but this the channel is called Street Racing Space Toys, and I'll post this on the, uh, the chat for you guys. And he did a video. It was 9 minutes and 26 seconds long. And what was cool about it, and I don't know if I've ever seen this before myself personally, I watch a lot of YouTube gun videos. He moved from New York to, 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 to Georgia, and he showed the process of him going to buy his very first gun. He bought himself a Smith & Wesson SD9 VE. I was just looking at videos on the VE. And he chose it. He was so happy to be in a, in a state where he can easily go purchase a handgun for self-defense. He said the first thing he wanted to do as soon as he got out of New York was go buy himself a handgun. And he kind of he shows himself at the store, looking the gun over, and they box it up, and he walks out, and then he takes it home and does an unboxing. And it was just, it was cool. It was neat to see something just simple and real. And you can tell the guy is is learning about handguns. I mean, there's a few things that he was talking about that maybe he didn't catch the first time. But check out Street Racing Toys, uh, Street Racing Space Toys. He's got 19 subs, and uh, he said he's going to start putting out a lot more gun videos. I told him about gun channels already, so I want to do a little plug in the morning. Um, as well as all you guys too that have your channels, obviously I want to promote you, but check that channel out. Definitely, definitely uh, a good one to look into. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, and I just discovered this, uh, this morning, um, there's a channel out there called the firearms guy, and I've been watching him for years. I'm a subscriber to his channel and he posted a video. I posted the link on the YouTube side. I think you guys can see it at the top there and I put it on the gun channel side. And if this is legit, this really, really bothers me. I'm going to trust his opinion, and I'm going to say it's real. He tells a story about how well, – he doesn't tell a story. He talks about how the Sky CPX-2 has officially become, according to the ATF, and he, this guy's got FFLs for friends that tell him this, it is the new official street gun. It is the official gun of street crime in the United States of America. And apparently it's replaced the high points. Apparently it's replaced the ring of fire guns. This is what he says in the video. And what's going on is if you buy more than one of those, if you buy a couple of them within a certain time period, you may be flagged by the ATF. And then he goes on and tells a story about a guy who bought four of them. I think he probably went through Classic Firearms and bought four and had them sent to his FFL. And the guy collects them because they come in 20 different color combinations. Now, why you'd want to collect CPX2s, I don't know, as a past owner of one who wasn't happy, but to each his own, right? That's not the point. Uh, he bought four of them. About a week later, he had the ATF show up at his door demanding to see them because they want to make sure that he wasn't reselling them because he bought four. They wanted to see the guns, and they wanted to make sure the serial numbers matched what he bought. So two questions I have here. Well, three. First of all, why is the ATF, ATF doing this? Is that even in their jurisdiction? All right. And uh, two, wouldn't they need a warrant to even see his property? And three, can they even lay hands on those things without a warrant? I'm a little furious because I'm going to go, I want to go buy a couple pistols and a few different finishes. I'm thinking about doing it. ATF going to show up at my door demanding to look at my property. What do you guys yeah, think? For, for search, they have to have a warrant 
first. Uh, they, well, are you searching if you hand them over at the door? They have no jurisdiction in this shit. That's I know, I know, and if this is this real, is not, if this guy's the telling most the truth, they can you do, know, the, yeah. the most they can do is they have, they have the right to go to the FFL that did the transfer and check the records, okay? Um, now, if they found something, some probable cause that led to an investigation, then they can uh, take whatever they've learned and, 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 you know, backtrack it to him and ask him about the guns and if he sold them. But the only thing, the only thing that, would, um, that would give them probable cause to investigate him in the first place is uh, if one of those guns ended up being used in a crime. There's no, you know what I mean? There's no, yeah. prob there's no reason, there's no jurisdiction. There's no re he didn't have to show them anything. Now, if he did, he did, that's fine. You know what I mean? He, yeah, he can do what he wants. But yeah, he didn't, yeah. they, had, they had no reasonable expectation that for, uh, to, to have him show them the guns. He could have very simply said, no, I'm not showing you anything. Go away. Nothing's wrong. I haven't done anything with the guns. Yeah. Leave. Leave my property right now. Now, what would you do, though? I mean, seriously, if you were the guy in question and they knocked on your door and asked or demanded to see the guns, would you say, you know, fuck you, get out of here? Or I, I would. You would. Say like, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> and I'd put it on video and you'd see it on YouTube. Oh, I know. I would be live streaming. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> um, you got a warrant? No? Okay, we'll come back later and then maybe we'll have a, we'll have a civil discussion about my property, which you approved me to purchase that I paid taxes on and bought with my own money. Go away. Go after narcos. Go waste your time someplace else. Go sell guns illegally to narcos. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm in that boat too. I have several times told cops they could not look in my vehicle. I've never had one knock on the door and ask to search my house. But it's like, fuck you, get a warrant, search my truck. Yeah. I, I would imagine that it went a little something like this. They they have an alert set up somewhere. Yeah. I don't know how. They've got some alert set up at some level. Um, I'm curious about George's gun laws then because I, I was – as far as I know, Georgia just has standard 4473s. There's no oh, the, registration in this it. Wasn't in 40, yeah, this oh. wasn't in Georgia. Yeah, this was in this was in a the Georgia story was oh, sorry, for the one channel that was promoting so, Yeah, so where but still is this? this he doesn't say where, but the FFLs, if you watch that video, there are guys that are FFLs that explain in the video below how you get flagged specifically if you buy more than one gun within a certain time period. And so they explain there's an extra alert that goes on there's a code for it or a number or something like that so i don't know what state it was in this is just a great reason to have yeah. a concealed carry license in a state mm -hmm. where they allow that to by bypass your background check because then the fbi doesn't know how many guns you buy at a time because the ffl never contact uh, atf doesn't know because the ffl never contacts you never get a background check they don't contact the fbi they don't contact nicks you could buy 100 guns and all you're doing is filling out 4473s and there's no alert because this is probably something that, but see, that's what's curious to me is there's there's an alert that's set up by buying so many guns at a time. So then they have to be tick they have to be tipped off by that. Now that's from the FBI. So then the FBI had to send this to the ATF to then verify what guns were purchased because there is no information on the 4473 that says what type of gun is purchased. You're just turning in a background check when you call in NICS. So or I'm sorry, I got that backwards. When they call in NICS, there's no. It just says, are you buying a handgun or a long gun? That's all the question asks when they call into Nick's. Um, oh, they're allowed to ask. Yeah, it's all they're allowed to ask. So they don't know what kind of gun. They wouldn't know that he bought four Sky Pistols. They wouldn't even know if he bought four of the same thing. All they would have known is he bought four pistols. So then at that point, the FBI presumably forwarded this to the ATF. And then the ATF, uh, as they do have the right to do, they're allowed to, to, to go into the FFL and check those uh, 4473 is to figure out what four guns were bought, and it just so happened that it's the four guns. It's four of the guns that the, that's now on their their yeah. list to, to watch out for. That just seems a, that that seems like a lot to have happened. Okay, there's a comment here on that video. This is what there's a guy who's an FFL. He says, "I'm an FFL dealer and can add some insight. When a customer buys more than one handgun within a span of five days, I have to fill out another form besides the 4473. Now that might be the state that this guy is in. That form yeah. reports a multiple handgun sale, and I have to send a copy to the local CLEO. And is that community law enforcement officer? Is that I don't I know. I assume so. City yeah, law so enforcement. Okay. Or something. And the original to the BATF. The supposed reasoning is that if a person buys multiple handguns at one time, they might be reselling them to criminal elements, namely gangbangers. The problem is with all this, in my six years of business as an FFL, I have yet to have one felon attempt to buy a firearm. 
So there yeah. you have it. There must be something extra that gets filed I mean, that we don't know about. Sure. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Standard SS Pond if that if that is the situation, or if he maybe in Nebraska you're able to put all of them on one background check. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've bought I've bought two or three guns at a time. Oh yeah, I think all of certain cases. I, well, granted, half the time that these they've all either been you know either completed lowers or just lower receivers that I've bought yeah, because I'm yeah. going to I'm going to build an AR-15, but. Uh, I've never gotten flagged. But look what happened to, was it Aries Armament? Well, would you even know if you got flagged? Well, they, not unless they, they showed prob- up. Not, not unless they, they showed yeah, up. Unless no. they, yeah, unless they decided to show up, you wouldn't know. if You, you may have gotten flagged and didn't know it. Because they, they looked so, at it and because... then said, nah, nothing going on there. Don't worry about it. You know, oh, he's just buying some lowers. Like, yeah, like they looked the at it and they said, right it's just now. Night Strike. <laughs> you know what though the, the ATF does those things and I'd mentioned this I was talking about this before remember I was it I think it was Aries was it Aries Armament out in California they were selling 80% lowers which weren't even considered and 80% lower they were considered an 80% paperweight they were selling dozens of them to customers and then the ATF busted in their door confiscated all their records and took all their 80% lowers right out of the store that I mean that was on video that, 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 you saw that you saw that stuff that happening. was uh that was completely different because that was done with, uh, you know, the California government because California is cracking down just on everything. But I'm just saying the ATF will do these things if they want to, or at least they think they can. I mean, I, I don't know. That kind of bothers me because as somebody who wants to buy multiple guns in one trip and wants to get, I mean, it's not. I'm not going to be buying CPX twos, but still, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that you're going to buy eighty percent really... CPX twos, right? <laughs> no, I'm just saying guns in general. You know what? A CPX two is eighty percent because it only runs about twenty percent of the time. So, all right. <laughs> Let's just get and I I oh god don't even get me started I've wasted so much of my life and money on that thing it's not even worth it if I could take it back I would mm. this kind of punctuates a point I've been making here for about a year uh, people think that they don't give information on what guns you're buying to the ATF they do and they're not keeping lists you goddamn right they know what you're buying they're keeping lists of what it is otherwise there's no way they'd know this guy is buying skies. Mm-hmm. Everything's got a paper trail, and it can all come back to you. I don't. It's just it's just curious yeah. what triggers them to actually investigate that paper trail because well, if, if there if there is a yeah. paper trail that tell that that if 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 any federal agency wanted to, they could find out each and every gun we bought through an FFL with a forty four seventy three. That's true, but most of the time, the vast majority of the time, it's it's too much work. They don't bother. So you got to figure out what are the things that tip them off. Like if there is, okay, you buy multiple handguns, then, then there's an alert that gets sent out. I have to report that. Okay, then they check into it. So it's, it'd be good to know what those things are, those extenuating circumstances other than just your average person walking in and buying a handgun or, or a shotgun or whatever that is going to force this, this process, you know, that's going to alert somebody to something that then they're going to want to investigate. Because, I, I mean... You know, I've been buying guns for a long time. I've never heard of m- multiple handguns triggering anything. Uh, you know, and this is something, something. This is something recent that just happened. But it is. I think it's the combination of it being a CPX2, which is now labeled as the street gun, and somebody buying multiple of them in one of the same model within one given time period. Now the guy bought four different colors, and if the ATF had even a grain of knowledge, they probably would have said, "Oh, it's four different colors." It's. I don't think I don't think you see gangbangers out there asking for custom colors. Purple gun. <laughs> Give me that. I want the okay. I want the bloods red, the crip blue, and then we need the uh, the 18th Street purple and black. And then can I get a pink for my wife? Okay, cool, excellent. Yeah, you know I don't know. I just think it's ridiculous. Anyway, that had me fired up this morning. So that and a lot of coffee. So can I say something about that? Please. It's really awful that criminals are sinking to the sky. CPX two oh, at least their you know guns. What? At least I mean, with the Jimenez, you know the slide's going to fly off and hit your intended target. At least you're going to knock your target out <laughs> if the gun doesn't work, Matt. Right? No, but it, it, exactly, exactly. But and why? Why leave the high point? It's I know, ugly, but it works. It's, and it's a proven design. It's a it doubles as a anyway. club. It's a good club if you need it. You can I mean, work on your house with it. And, it's and, a good shingling hammer. Yeah. And in every and in and in, in every interview, they all think it's a Glock forty anyway. So they think they've got a Glock. Why would they? Why yeah. would they bump up from that? That's you right. Know, that's right. It's the it's a go to. Actually, they're, they're not bumping up. They're bumping down. That's what I'm saying. Why would they? Uh, why they already got their Glock forty, so they're good. Yep, that's right. That's right. It's a high point. Eight round clip. I know. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, all right, all right. Let's let's get this back on track. My bad. I apologize. I just I had to get that out there because well, I and I'm gonna watch uh, this video and see what people say. So what's hey, up, Travis? Yeah, my lives matter. I What's have that? A, 
Do you say sky sky a, owners' lives matter? Yeah, they do because they can't defend themselves. <laughs> I have a theory on the why switch from high point to sky because in big old parachute pants are going out of fashion. They got to have mm. a little gun. Skinny jeans well, these days require a smaller gun. Mm. Those little hipster kids, man. Those little hipster kids. They like the multiple colors. It goes along well with their mismatched clothing. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. It's just a theory. It's gun camouflage. It is. It is. You can make it match with whatever color of yoga pants you're wearing. So that's perfect. So. Yep. All right. Okay. So here we go, guys. Let's get into the topic of long distance shooting. That's what everybody came here for. Um, what is our definition of long range or long distance shooting? At what point do you guys think that we're now going into long range? Because some of you might not have access to a range that goes beyond 100 yards. Do we consider 100 yards with a rifle long distance or long range shooting? No. No. That's self defense distances. Okay. 100 yards and okay. in, that's self defense, and that's an easy shot if you're out hunting. Long range is 300 right. and above, I'd okay. say. All right, yeah. so we'll, we'll we'll talk. We can talk 300 yards on out because that that really affects the kind of calibers and the rifles that we're going to discuss. Because you know, I'm not going to do long range shooting with my 30 30 or my 243. Oh wait a minute! Now I consider yeah. long distance shooting over 500 meters. Anything under 500 meters is not long distance. So 300 yards, that's questionable. That's when I can't do metric. Well, how many how many meters is three hundred? It's, it's pretty damn similar. It's, it's yeah, five hundred okay. meters <laughs> is five hundred yards roughly. Yeah, it's like five hundred twelve yeah. yards or something. So yeah, yeah. anything over five hundred yards, five hundred meters, I would call yeah. long distance. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're probably you're probably you're, you're probably finding yourself in a room group full of people who don't shoot outside three hundred yards hardly ever at all. So it's all long distance to us. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I mean, I've got access to I got an eighteen hundred yard. Uh, range I can go to, but I don't go beyond 300. I've taken my Mosin, tried to hit 500 yards, tried to hit a gong at 500, but that was a no-go. So, Speaking yeah. of 500 yards, I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to go shoot in the back. You know what? Why don't you start making some videos so we know you actually do shoot out back nice, right? <laughs> he can't, no, no, wait. He can't because he, he, he only shoots at night. And, and the camera's uh, just not good enough. Night. It would make no, a muzzle flash. Travis, is, I'm showing you a video already. Don't give know, me that shit. I know, I know. You do, you do, and you can we need to do we got to get you funds to get you a better camera i'm serious man we I just got to get you anything a little 80 dollars point and click with a video feature would do the job man i, I would like have to a mention phone? that i it would like to mention that uh matt uh right after matt complained about getting hit i checked yesterday i got hit are you guys oh, seeing this on your video when you click in the creator studio and you click on videos no. instead of having a, a green dollar sign where do you find it no, it's, it, instead of a green dollar sign, it's a it's a, a gold or, or yellow gold? one. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to go back and look through I, my video. I didn't notice anything yet, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. So yeah. it, it, they hit. Yeah, I, I put in requests to, for them to manually check all my videos. Um, so far, three have come back, and out of those three, they said one was acceptable. They're just tagging all my stuff. Every time I upload a video, they tag it. It just doesn't matter now. They're, it's it's um, my channel is now officially tagged as. Restrictive content and no ads and all this other shit. My God. So. All right, guys. So we can say that the definition of long range, we're going to go 300 yards and beyond. Okay. We can all agree to that. Um, is there one common caliber? Now we're going to talk high end. We're going to get expensive down the road. Is there, what would we consider as the best long range round you could buy for the budget shooter for somebody getting into long, long range shooting for the first time? And is there a really good sub $500 rifle out there that you could get? Not counting glass. We'll talk glass in a little bit. What do you guys think? AR-15, 223. If you're talking inexpensive shooting for, and you want something that's going to be, I mean, Beyond I guess it depends on which, are you trying to hit paper? Or you or you want something that's yeah. potentially going to, I mean, because I, I, I like an AR-15 and, you know, there's let's, some good let's, loads let's out talk, there, but but if I'm but, let's talk target shooting. Let's talk accuracy. Yeah, I mean that, that's shooting. great. And I, yeah. I know people who can take AR-15s out to 800 yards and that kind of shit, and that's great and all. But I, I mean, for long distance shooting, I'm I'm not I'm I'm thinking 308 for affordability that's, or 30 yeah, out six. 308. Um, Savage Axis and 308. Okay, Savage Axis. But Travis is talking yeah. about a sub $500 gun and affordable ammunition. That's why you go with the AR and 223 or 556. Five, the 308 and 30 out six will reach out further. It's got more punch, but the ammo is more expensive. The hold, gun's more expensive. Hold on, Squib. That's that was true a few years ago. But Palmetto State Armory has been having sales on their EA10s, <laughs> which yeah. you can build yeah. one or buy one for like 500 bucks right now. No. 
Well, uh, even even and, besides all that, and I mean, the we're, 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 C308s we're, we're, are also well, under five. Well, there's also this thing called bolt actions, and you can get tons yeah, of them for under five hundred dollars. There's I was going to kind of separate semis and bolt actions. So, um, would, we, would we be good going with say a Ruger? Who makes we got the Mossberg Patriot and the Ruger American Rifle, yeah, or you got, the, you got uh, the, what is this, the new? Uh, yeah, well, you get a, you can get you can just go go standby and get a Remington seven hundred for you know about four hundred bucks. I mean, if you're you know, if you just want to go with uh, something that's solid, you, you, there's the uh, Savage 110. You can get a, you can uh, get a Howa 1500. Um, you know, you can find all these things for 500 bucks or less if that's what you're looking for. Or you can go extreme budget and go, you know, like what you're talking about with the Patriot, the Ruger American, and the Savage yeah. Axis, and the what is it, the Remington Seven? Is it the 83 now, the one that replaced the 770? Yeah. yeah. Whatever that new yeah. model number is, and those are all 300 dollars or less bolt actions but there, there's a ton of options for five hundred dollars and less for good rifles that you know you're gonna have to get some good glass on them and you know you may want to bet them or you know do something with the stock if you, you don't like the stock there's options void stocks options out there but there's there's just literal ass tons of, of good rifles that can be had for 500 bucks or less my uh, my local yeah. Walmart, you know, towards the end of the hunting season, they usually mark down the rifles, and I've seen the uh, the a Patriot Scope combo or a Ruger American Rifle combo in three hundred eight for like three forty nine, less than less oh, yeah. than four hundred dollars. I mean, you can get into yeah. it. You don't need to think, oh my God, long distance shooting, I can't afford to compete. You know, and then ammo, you can get you can get brass three hundred eight for ten dollars a box for twenty. It's out yeah, there. You can find it readily. So, if you're shooting long range, you're not going to buy cheap ammo for the two twenty three or the three hundred eight. Most likely, you're going to load your own because you're going to want to match it to the guy. Well, I'm talking about. I'm just saying now, somebody who's going into it the first time, they could already have reloading experience. I'm taking the the noob, the somebody who's new to the whole idea. They want to just go out there and see if they can hit something at 500 yards. That's know, why what? I was saying 223 yeah. AR-15. I was doing headshots at 500 meters with 55 grain NATO ball ammunition in the military with iron sights with enough training. And enough time and put enough rounds down range, you can do that. But that's going to cost you money. Tony's right about the 308 6 If you're going to be hitting targets at long distance with those, whether you're using a bolt gun, whether you're using an optic, whether you're using a semi-auto and iron sights or whatever, you're going to be using more expensive ammunition. That mil spec will reach out there, but it's not as accurate as the mil spec in 5.56, in my opinion. Okay. Um, AWAG, do you want to chime in? Because you've got a lot of experience with long-range shooting, and I know that you don't break the bank on all of your gear what would you can you share some wisdom with us here because you've got a lot of experience with this well um two things um the savage model 10 that i have i love it's in 308 it, ammunition is a little expensive but with 150 grain uh i think it's like american <laughs> eagle or federal um i can consistently hit 22 long rifle casings at 100 yards now that's not necessarily long range but that can translate into long range so say um if you have a small if you don't have much range you just incrementally make your target smaller and that can help you practice instead of practicing at a thousand yards and you put a 60 pound 24 inch steel plate down there and then you have to haul it all the way back whereas if you make your target smaller at a shorter range you can increase your precision without having to walk that far. Yeah. Um, um, over on, oh, real quick on the YouTube side, um, 04 Jaime said, the Thompson Center for Encompass in 308, out of the box with match ammo is a good contender. And Rock Humper says, uh, load your own rounds for long range. And that's that's what I do too, is yeah. I, uh, I try to not necessarily load the ammunition to um, specific specs, but mm -hmm. I try to every barrel is different on a gun and it almost acts think of it as like a guitar string whereas when you take that shot it wiggles around that makes a almost a harmonic note and the closer you can get that bullet inside of that barrel to match that harmonic note the more accurate that round can be so it's not necessarily about velocity ballistic coefficients that kind of stuff i mean those do play a part in extreme long range shooting like 1500 to 2000 yards uh, but it's it's mostly the harmonics of the rifle that are doing the work at short range yeah 
Um, AY, do you have a recommendation? What would be a good uh, budget bolt action to get into? What? How much did you pay for your rifle, or approximately how much was it? Um, I paid a, about, I forget the exact number, but it was like 620 bucks out the door. Okay. And then I slapped a, uh, a SWFA, um, what is it, the fixed six power. And that that's pretty solid. That's a pretty solid optic that I would feel comfortable shooting out to six or 700 yards with. Okay. Maybe even a thousand after some practice. And you've got under a thousand dollars into this uh, into this setup, mm -hmm. right? Around a thousand, not even quite a thousand. Yep. Okay. Yep, not even quite a thousand. Hey, uh, midnight range. Tell us about about your setup. What are you running? Because you, um, you you've got you showed me a picture of your build, and it's pretty cool, man. What do you got? Yeah, I did a really good job price wise on mine too. So, um, it's a three hundred eight. <clears throat> it's a Savage Ten F uh, FCP SR. So it's actually a um, it's got the AccuStock, um, the Accu Trigger. Um, it's got the 20 MOA rail on it. It's a 10 round detachable mag, and it is threaded already. So, yeah, my my whole setup was um, like a thousand six bucks or something goofy like that. Oh, wow! Wow! <clears throat> and that's with the rifle. The uh, I put a Vortex Venom um, six by five by twenty by forty four. Um, on top, um, that's with the rings. I had the rings lapped, um, and I put a muzzle brake on the end, um, okay. and um, a bipod. All right. So I for a thousand bucks, I got it. Oh, and uh, and and that's with my sling attached too. <laughs> Price wise, yeah. I, I put a sling on it. So and that's you know that's if with you want to get into local stuff. competition, you've got something that that you could you could probably compete with at a certain level. You know, yeah, if you want to I, go into yeah. I could only shoot up to 100 yards of my range, but there are yeah. a few ranges in PA. There are a few in PA that go all the way out, you know, 1,000, 1,500. And I just once I get once I get shooting with it a little bit, I, I want to take a yeah, I want to take like a day trip and just go out. And I, I've never shot that long, so uh, but yeah. I've always wanted to. So that was cool. one of the guns that I wanted in my collection was something nice. Um, yeah. And I consider it a budget. I mean, for what it is, I consider it budget because I. I mean, if I wouldn't have gotten such good deals, it's probably thirteen or fourteen hundred bucks. So, well, and you can right. you can buy you can buy a little bit at a time. It's not like you have to go buy everything right away just to have it in one weekend, you know. Well, hell yeah, you do. Uh, you <laughs> well, you not everybody to, can afford to do that, but I'm saying somebody wants be, to get into it, you know. You don't want to be sitting in your sitting in your basement staring at a set of rings with nothing to put them on. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Hey, Matt, what do you what do you run for bolt action? You have an odd six, don't you? Is it a thirty out six that you use? Yeah, I've got a I've got a thirty out six that I picked up a while back, and I did like a little uh, a little budget build just to see how good I could make a, a cheap Savage Axis. So I've got the uh, Savage Axis 2 XP, um, and uh, I put a Boyd stock on it, and uh, new rings. I've got a Weaver Caspa series. I'm actually a fan of those. I know they're fairly inexpensive scopes. They're not yeah. PSA level or anything like that, you know. But they're about they're about 130 bucks, 140 bucks, depending on which one you get. Cool. Um, and the Boyd stock makes a huge difference over that plastic crap that comes on those things. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And it, and the the, X, the Savage Axis 2 XP actually comes with the Savage Accu trigger, which just alone is a ninety dollar upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so, which the difference between a standard Savage Axis and a Savage Axis XP is only about fifty bucks. So, just that in and of itself more than pays for the the difference in price if you want to if you're looking to pick one up. But um, yeah. it's a decent setup. I've taken it out to three hundred yards, and I don't I don't have any issues with it. I'd I'd be you know extremely comfortable putting a putting a deer or something down at okay. 300 i only have a 300 yard range that i can take it out to so i can't test it any further than that but you but, will be um, in a couple weeks <laughs> yes <laughs> you're gonna have as far as so, you want to shoot in a couple weeks <laughs> yeah so we'll see how it does yeah. i mean yeah, i yeah. haven't i haven't bedded the rifle or, or, or anything like that i didn't go to any extra links outside of just the stock and 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 that kind of thing um but it seems like a, a, a solid rifle. I'm not an extreme long distance shooter though. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and honestly, I use my lever action 30, 30 more than I do the bolt action just because of where I live in Texas, you know, yeah. needing to take a shot at a deer outside of 120 to 150 yards. is just not a thing that happens down here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it hasn't ever really been necessary, but okay. Let's uh, let's move into the whole gear side now, guys. We'll get back to the expensive end of the of the long distance shooting here. Absolute necessities you got to have in order to practice long range shooting. You guys all chime in. With, do we need spotting scopes? Do we need sandbags, bipods? I want to say this right now. I've got a lead sled. I don't know what the brand is. It's the 
lead sled brand and it's okay but i've noticed when i'm trying to do this precision shooting you know no matter how you adjust it it still moves it still it like kind of bumps and jumps but i'd be better off going well what do you guys think sandbags well, what's a, what's a good first setup to go on out and do some long range shooting personally i don't like the uh the lead sleds because it messes with the harmonics see when you have your rifle in a big metal cage almost as in a sorts is it's all fixed to the ground and it doesn't it's a lot different than if you were to shoulder it. Say, if you have to come down to it and crap is hitting the fan and you have to take a three, 400 yard shot at a deer or something to feed your family and you zeroed it on a lead sled and you don't have that lead sled, that harmonics will be very different from when it was on the sled and then you shouldering yeah. it or you going on prone. Which so maybe the lead sled's it's... not the best way to go. I do it because I, I get tired of holding the gun for all these times when I'm out filming, so I just have it there. It's quicker and easier for me, but yeah, in real life, sandbags is probably the better way to go. A good bipod is a better way to go. Well, yeah. I, like I think the lead sled is good for, for sighting in a scope, and yeah, then once yeah. you've got your scope dialed in, yeah. then you start practicing your long-distance shots without it mm -hmm. um, to figure out where you're hitting and that kind of thing so you can tweak it. But if you're just dialing, if you've got a new scope and new rings and and uh, and everything, and you're good to go. I think a lead sled works pretty well, just to just to just to dial it in and know you've got it all set up right, um, and then you move on from that. If you know how to use a sling properly, you can use that to stabilize no matter what position you're in to give you better accuracy at any range. And yep. then you know the 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 lead sled or any stand or any of that that's good for bench shooting, but if you're out in the field, whether you're hunting or it's uh, some sort of combat application or or whatever if you know how to properly use that sling it's an affordable way to stabilize your your rifle yeah one thing about bipods if you put a bipod on the end of your gun and this is more for bolt action than anything but be sure that when the gun's resting on that bipod that that barrel's still free floated that's what i was going to say too yeah that happens a lot all of a sudden, yeah, guys put a lot of weight on the, the barrel and it's it's not free floated anymore. Very cool. So, I mean, it's not like you have to have a bunch of gear to get out there and it'd be best to, you know, just maybe say take a few sandbags. What about spotting scope? Do you guys really think that's necessary when you first get into long range shooting? Does the spotting yes. scope really make life easier? Yeah. Oh, hell yes. Okay. Especially if you're older and your eyes aren't as oh, good yeah. as they were when you were 20. I'm starting to notice that now. I'm 40, and I'm like, okay, this. Why do I keep having to squint? I mean, I wear contacts uh, most of the time, especially when I when I'm at the range. But it, yeah, I mean, I'm noticing it. It's even with my pistol shooting, it's starting to, you know. So anyway, yeah, yeah, it's the kind of thing that makes you want to invest in better glass than you did when you're in your 20s and, and broke. You know, it's you want to spend a little bit more to have a little bit more clear glass and so on. Um, all right. So where does Wait, where does a person? Hey, oh, on yeah. Hang on a second. Am I in the right channel? I thought this. Yeah. Was, I thought this was the channel for uh, buying airsoft scopes and duct taping them onto your rifle. Oh, oh no, goodness. no, no, no! Look, just because I'm a former CPX 200 doesn't mean I'm cheap. Okay. No, no, that and, channel's and, on and, Tuesday and, nights at nine hey. o'clock. <laughs> hey, you did, oh. and you've owned a, 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 a Jennings or a Jimenez. So a uh, Jimenez. I've got it. I've got a Jimenez. Same J shit, but. That's a good gun. But yeah, my my J9. I, I actually sold it, but. Yeah. I'm just saying that's two strikes against you. So. Yep, well, yeah, I've had a couple. Of them. Although I've owned one too, so <laughs> yeah, I know, and I and I won't go back to them. I mean, I learned it's one of those things where you, you're you're in the gun store. It's a hundred fifty dollar gun. You're like, I'll just try it. It can be fine, and then you take it home, and it's an absolute nightmare. So yeah. well, I don't think anybody's using duct tape either. We're using the knockoff no. stuff from Walmart. So definitely, definitely <laughs> Dollar Tree. Dollar oh, tree. Yeah, duct tape's too expensive. Yeah, you can't buy tape. Yeah, no, I don't Roller use duct tape. I use monkey, monkey monkey tape. It's the cheaper stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so you want to get into long range shooting. Let's just get some advice out there for somebody getting into it for the first time. Where do you even begin learning to calculate windage and bullet drop? Let's pretend your gun sighted in. Is there a good book you can go to? Is there an app you guys can use? Where do you start yeah. calculating? I can understand bullet drop. Let's talk about how to find the, that information. Well, with, Hogden, um, first go off, to Hogden's right? website. They have a calculators. Okay. Used for nothing. Okay. And so, what do you put in your you put in your round your your grain weight? You put in the windage, the wind, speed, and direction, and it basically gives you an estimate. 
I don't know that it even has anything to do with wind. I think it's just, hang on, wait a minute, I'm wrong. It's not Hogden, it's Hornady. Oh, yeah, Hornady's website is fantastic. I mean, they're a local company. I got to promote them, and I love their company. But, oh, Tony disappeared on us. Um, I was just kind of curious if you guys knew if there's an app out there that you could use where you could put in the round that you're shooting and the wind speed and the wind direction. It would give you an estimate as to what you need to compensate. Because when you start going out there, oh, let me explain this. The first time I fired a 50 cal was an Armalite. And I fired four rounds through it. And the guy told me, you know, we were shooting at a cast iron buffalo at 800 yards. And he said, uh, make sure that you're, you know, aiming, you know, try to aim more towards the rear to hit the center. Aim towards the rear quarter of the of the buffalo to hit the center. And I'm like, I'm going to do a headshot. And I shot it. And he was looking through the spotting scope. And the bullet landed like three feet to the left of the, of the uh, or two feet to the left of the buffalo's head. He was retrying to do a headshot. I'm like, yeah. And so, I mean, windage, wind can have such a huge effect. It, it gets amplified, especially where I live, where you got 20 to 25 mile an hour north and south winds all the freaking time. Uh, Tony, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the uh, the chat. So what do you guys think when it comes to calculating? Do you even pay attention well, to bullet drop? Well, that's where the spotting scope comes in handy is instead of having to do your target change, walk all the way down there and see where you've been missing. You can look through the scope and see, and then you make your adjustments. A good thing to have is a range book. The range book's gonna have a drawing of the target that you're you're shooting at. And you mark on the, on the range book where your hits are. You look through your spotting scope, or you have a spotter tell you, and you mark, and then you make your windage adjustment on your sight based on that to, to bring your rifle left or right, or you know do your elevation up or down. And then once you start to get them a tighter, tighter group on, on the bullseye, then you know you're set. The only thing is, once that wind changes or your distance changes, those those are out the out the door. But a good range yeah. book is not a bad way to do it without an app. Uh, Doug D is chiming in on the YouTube side. He said the the Soros Rex videos are real good. I guess I haven't heard of those. I don't know if that's a channel. To Borosaurus Rex. Rex is the man. He's doing classes now too. Does he have a channel on yep. YouTube? Yeah, yeah he does. Yes, he does. Yeah, obviously doping your rifle. Do you guys want to talk about what doping is or what rifle dope is? I remember that term from, uh, um, what is it? I got a subscription to the NRA magazine, God, American Rifleman. They have the dope bag is what they call it. And that's where they do a, a review on a firearm. Uh, Are you guys familiar with the term of doping? Yeah. Keeping a list of the ballistics data that you have, you know, for okay. how your gun performs at long range just keep a note of that that way you've got a quick reference on what the gun's capable of doing yeah one one thing that's pretty cool now too is um for like i have a vortex scope they have their um flip open uh so uh, covers the, the the scope covers and they actually through their website you can buy they call them dope discs and oh. you can you can go onto their site and basically put anything you want on these dope discs and then they they snap into the inside of the scope covers so when you flip the cover up you can actually look at the dope disc and it and it has whatever information you want on it those oh, no, are pretty cool just, that is just awesome yeah and i, I want to get that, that especially if you know you're going to be hunting in an area where you tend to get the same wind <laughs> us yeah. it's north wind or south wind for six months out of the year it never fails yeah uh, and springtime that, you know, east and west so yeah they're, they're pretty cool i if you, you i found them online i found them on youtube actually when i was doing some research on scopes and and mounting scopes and stuff that this popped up and uh yeah that's pretty cool i want to get a set of them that's the one thing I, the next thing i want to get is a nice set of flip-ups i want to go with theirs and then i can go in and print out you know oh, for when sweet. i do have a chance to shoot long distance yeah you've got a you've got a cool little chart and it's you can you can put on it whatever you want that's yeah pretty that's pretty neat cool man so maggie question for you do you have any experience with uh i mean i know very little about the firearms that you own um, do you have any experience with any long range shooting? Do you have a bolt action or do you go out to the range? What do you do? Um, I do have a bolt action 30 out 6 that, you know, would be capable of long range, but I don't really do it that much because okay. I don't have a good place to go. Now but, you're, I mean, like, I'm sure it exists. I just haven't, I haven't found a good place in my area to, to shoot long range. But yeah. What, what state are you in? Michigan. Are you in Michigan, that's what I thought, and Squibby in Michigan too. Um, is it hard to find good, long, open ranges? Because where I'm at, they're not hard to find, but I know in some states, there's no public land. It's all it's all private, it's all, or it's it's, it's uh, state parks, and you don't have access to it. Do you have trouble finding a good, long range that you can go to? Um, basically, yeah. I mean, it's, we don't have really big open areas, like you said, that's like public land. Most yeah, of, yeah. Most of the the public land is, you know, woods or uh, 
you know, it's kind of hilly and whatnot. So you do got Detroit. Yeah, you can pretty much just go downtown, can't you, and just shoot down the street? I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. Well, yeah, way. obviously. I mean, that's where I go, <laughs> but that's not good long range, though. I mean, you yeah, can yeah. hit the block next to you. True, and true, true. A thousand meters. I mean, worst case scenario, you're going to take out a CPX2 owner. Right <laughs> anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, wah, wah, wah. okay, so let's go on to glass. Uh, let's talk about scopes. Is it possible to get... Let's say sub three hundred dollar glass scopes that will let you go out to a thousand yards if you have a capable rifle. Is that, or, yeah. or is the low end not going to be visible enough? Well, I mean, you said you said what three hundred dollars? Let's, let's go three fifty. Let's go three fifty. I'm trying uh, to get some. Uh, yeah, right corner. I sent. I spent three twenty nine on mine on my Vortex. Okay. I mean, I got a. I got a hundred bucks off. I got a great deal on it, but you know, I, I spent three twenty nine with shipping. Um, and that's a six six to six by five to twenty by forty four okay. viper. That's a okay. that's a nice scope, man. No, I, I love Vortex. I got a Strike Fire too, and I mean, I I love I love their line. <clears throat> I think they do a great job. But yeah, uh, it was last year's. You know, they're they're probably they're probably coming out with their new line. Yeah, but I think it was. I think I got like it was like almost twenty five percent off what it was last year. I mean, I snapped um, that thing right up. Just to throw this one out there, another good line that's out there that a lot of people don't realize, and I'm sure they're buying it from somebody else. Cabela's makes their own scopes also, or they have their own line and with their name on it, and they also have a lifetime warranty on them too, which I think is really cool. A lot of people don't even realize that. You know, you go there, all you see is the Nikon, and you see the uh, the Leopold and all that. Um, hey, I emailed so yeah, you I mean, a, Cabela's a are decent. I emailed you a picture of that dope disc if you want to show it. Yeah, yeah, I can bring that up on a on a full screen here. I'll get into my email. Um, <clears throat> AWAG, what about you? How much do those scopes run that you buy? The SWFA Super uh -huh. Sniper Scopes, um, they, it depends on which one you get. They have fixed 6, fixed 10 power, they have mill, they have MOA, they have um, the reticle itself, it can be MOA or mill rads. Um, they run about $299 online and it's like $20 to ship. Cool, um, cool. But wow. the, these... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the reticle on them has, it's basically a crosshair with an interrupted dot in the center that the dot itself with the fixed six power, uh, I can clearly see uh, if I put the dot on a 22 long rifle casing at 100 yards, it'll cover a little bit more than three quarters of it. Hmm. But you can, it, it's a pretty small dot, so you can get pretty good accuracy out of that. One thing I'd like to toss out there is if you're thinking about a long range scope, you would probably do better off to consider getting a Milrad scope as opposed to a MOA because the MOA is going to be kind of cluttered up looking. Okay. Or it could be, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me do a quick screen share with you guys. Um, Midnight Range sent me a picture of the dope discs so you guys can see what they look like. And this is the Vortex Dope Disc. Is this uh, this is it right here? Can you guys see that? I'm not yeah. sure if you can check that out. So, uh, so that's what it looks like right there. That's what he was talking about earlier with the doping discs. Very cool stuff, man. All right. Um, so, okay. So we're talking about glass. We've gone through the idea of, of glass. So there, there is budget glass out there. Um, Ay, could you take yours out to a thousand with the right rifle? Um, Could you go out to a thousand yards with the fixed ten power? Yes, I would feel very comfortable taking that out to a thousand yards. What's the furthest the, you've shot it? Um, the furthest I've shot it is three hundred yards. My range has a three hundred yard range. Okay. With with my particular scope, but I'm shooting at incredibly small objects like eggs okay. and shotgun shells at three hundred yards. So. Okay. Matt, you know, with you moving, this is going to put a whole nother. You might as well start a whole separate channel, the long range NEA shooting channel. Now that you're going to have <laughs> yeah, never enough extensive, range. wide, never enough range and never enough land. You just you do like the late Boy Scout. You get the mountains in the background every time you go out there. Right off yeah, the highway, nice. there's cars going behind you, just shooting off into the mountains. You know. Oh yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> um, this was a comment that was made uh, earlier too. Um, I think Rock Humper said, you know, hand load your own ammo, do your own custom loads. Um, where do you start with that? Okay, I've got a 308, and I want to start doing my own custom loads. What kind of what kind of load could I put together in 308 that's going to give me an edge? What What do you need to look for if you're going to be well, hand loading your own ammo for that? What's What's going to some of the some of the thing with hand loading too is, 
like I haven't hand loaded yet for mine. I've been shooting, um, I've been shooting the uh, federal match, you know, uh, boat tail hollow points. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've, I'm going to shoot it. I've got one more box of those to shoot, and then I'm going to start reloading just so I have some brass. But um, I mean, for me, the way I think about it, even on a rifle that might not be super super accurate, like you might not be able to get to, you know, a quarter MOA or whatever. Or maybe you can with with match ammo. Even if you do match that, as far as accuracy, you're going to be shooting, you know, cheaper. Mm-hmm. But you should be more consistent because there's not going to be any deviation in powder, and there's not going to be any deviation in overall length. You're going to be able to trim to whatever you want, you know, your spec to be. So even if shooting one bullet isn't any more accurate than the other, you're going to have a more consistent product to shoot so that should help your overall group size well and it's going to help you performance wise when you're out doing that deer hunt you know you've got a certain margin of error you can make and still make a kill shot you know right i think that's going to be very important any game hunting for that matter you know yeah that's that's the way i look at it yeah the thing with reloading for accuracy and i'm talking about pinpoint accuracy is that it's, it's trial and error uh you have to go through and figure out what works for the gun and it can be a process. I mean, fairly long and drawn out. Yeah, for sure. Could uh, you get into the forums and ask some questions? Maybe like there's a Ruger forum or there's a Mossberg forum or there's you, a you Howl can. forum you could get into and say, what do you guys recommend for this model as a good hand load? What? I don't know. Every gun's different. Every barrel's different. And every, you know? every, every gun's yeah. going to be different. Every, yeah. every throat on every rifle is going to be slightly different. So you can start with somewhere else, but something else too is that as somebody that reloads, like um, you want to have you want to have your starting point as far as you know powder and stuff. You want to start yeah. low and work your and work your way up anyway. So having somebody else's starting point to me doesn't necessarily help because I'm going to do it my way from the beginning anyway. Okay. And then to try and determine throat like the length of the cartridge. Um, you know, unless you have a gauge to do it, you kind of have to figure that out for yourself anyway, because somebody else's cartridge um, might be two hundredths or, you know, uh, two thousandths different, but you might be the same distance away from the land. So his cartridge might be longer, but they're sitting in the, the same distance away from the barrel. Or the really, camera. So really you know. hate to say this, but there is no shortcut. It's just a matter of right. trial and error. Yep. But that's part of the fun, too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Part of the fun. When that's you get into favorite. reloading and handloading, you're going to develop your uh, your favorites, whether it be for accuracy or, or, or whatnot. But uh, just um, even though it might be a little bit expensive to do a lot of shooting, to try out different, uh, different uh, bullets at different powders and that sort of thing, just have fun with it. Yeah. You know, be patient. You're developing a skill that that you can constantly work on for the rest of your life. I mean, it's one of those things where you. I mean, I'm, and I'm I'm thinking about starting to go into this area. I'm, I, there's a very inexpensive, 30 out six. I have an opportunity to buy right now that's already got glass on it. It might be kind of a nice gateway into long range shooting because right now I have nothing that I could comfortably shoot beyond 300 yards myself personally. Okay, I have no magnified optics on my AR. Um, I've got a 243 that I probably wouldn't go beyond three or 350 yards. I've got a 30 30 that I'd probably only take out to 300 yards. So for me, I've got this opportunity to get into it. So it's like, what, what would I, what do I need to know? You know? And so then I want to be patient with it. I don't, and the older I get, the more patient I am when I go out to the range, it's like, I'm going to take my time out here today. I'm going to have fun. You know, don't get it's, frustrated. It's you know. funny. Something? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, for paper, with, that 243 will go there. Yeah. With what I do is since I shoot 308 and very expensive 223, when I do long range, I actually kind of stopped using the centerfire stuff and I started practicing on a 22 long rifle bolt action mm-hmm. at longer ranges than, say, normal. From my knowledge, the 22 long rifle at, I think, 300 yards is the same ballistics as a 300 wind mag at 1,500 yards. So... Not not so much ballistics, so, but what it'll do spin drift drop wise. 
And I guess that's so something that, we didn't talk about. You could start off with a, with a decent, you know, on a decent uh, 22 LR with some good glass on it and get out there and, and shoot all day for 20 bucks, you know? And there's bucks a per YouTube break. channel. Yeah. Um, I, f I forget what it's called. It's like, it's like Matt and Sam after work. Uh, it's an Australian guy. He does just ludicrously oh. long range shooting with uh, all kinds of different calibers. He did 575 yards with a 22 long rifle. He did, like, with a 6.5 Creedmoor, 2,300 yards. He did, uh, I think he did, like, a 4570 government at, like, 970 yards. <laughs> Good God, man. I'll tell you what, the, 20, the 22 long rifle would be a lot more fun to shoot all day long at the range than 30 out 6 will be. Oh, yeah. Heck of a lot cheaper, too. That might be, you know, you can get into, get a decent 22 for 150 bucks. I mean, I, I, I bought a, what was it, a Savage Mark II F, and I posted a video on it, and there's guys that were posting comments saying, dude, I can shoot a dime-sized group all day and at, you know, 100 yards, 150 yards, and then you start to take it out. Um, I think you could have a lot of fun with that. You could really start, especially something like that, where you're not, the recoil is not going to wear you down after a while, and you can practically shoot it all day. And all right, now, the, oh, go ahead, anyway, I'm sorry, man, yeah. It's fine. Um, with a with the twenty two long rifle, you don't necessarily have to worry about um, cost too, especially with the bolt action. It you're not burning through ammo like a semi automatic, so you can pace yourself as well. Okay. Good point. Um, okay, let's go beyond a thousand yards. What are some of the ultimate calibers that you could shoot to maximize your reach or that you've read about or you know about? You might not necessarily own, but you know that you could take them out there, let's say, beyond 1,000 yards. What do you guys think? 50 BMG. Okay. Now let's, 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 let's turn it down a little bit. <laughs> All right. Mm. I, I'm thinking maybe let's, let's get into the let's, – let's start arguing 6.5 uh, Grendel or Creedmoor or whatever. Creed, Creedmoor, with, probably. Six millimeters. I'm going to – Oh, here we go. Stay on 308. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 308 is pretty good. Okay. I, I was At just kind of curious. Because, yeah. 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 We've got our range goes out to, they have a, a challenge every, it's actually happening um, tomorrow at my local range. We do this every month. They call it the Steel Gong Challenge. And you got to hit a 12 inch gong at 300, 600, 912. And if you keep hitting it, you get to keep going. And the people that have won it out to 1,800 yards have hit it with 6.5 Creedmoor, so that was kind of interesting. Um, but a lot of guys are chiming in on the YouTube side saying, well, I've taken this out to way past 1,000 yards. So so 308 would be a viable round if you want to go out to 1,500 yards, Tony. Uh, I'm personally a 30 out of 6 guy, but okay, okay. I'm willing to do the 308 because it's more comfortable to shoot for a session of any length of time because 30 out of okay. 6 can be brutal. Especially Let's, in the summer yeah. in the t-shirt. Uh, what about what about 338 Lapua? You guys have any experience with that at all? Uh, I've never fired it. Buying, I mean, I've never really researched it, but what do you think? I'm thinking about buying a Savage Model 112 uh, in 338 Lapua Mangum. It's only a single shot bolt action, but it's, it's basically a 12-pound rifle with a 32-inch barrel. And it's, it's supposed to be like... It's only a nine hundred dollar rifle. I mean, for three three eight Lapu uh, Magnum, it's that, that's a, quite a steal. Yeah, yeah, that's a cannon. You know, that's I, a big. That's a big round, man. Yeah, that uh, every gun I, I feel, buy, every gun I buy is with the hunting purposes in mind. So three thirty eight's just overkill. Way way overkill for anything I got here. But Tony, it'll already be quartered and prepackaged by the time you get to it if you hit it with the 338 Lapua. Oh, yeah. Just, hey, what's that well, smell? Well, the that he hunt will just uh, <laughs> turn into two <laughs> on its own. Yeah, I'll take out the squirrel and the tree. Okay, that. <laughs> Holy cow. So, but, but again, 308, 30 odd six. And Tony, you know, you keep going back to 30 odd six, and that's interesting because uh, my local FFL has a. Uh, Remington 710, and I have one in 243. I know it's the bane of the of the bolt action world, but I think it's a fine rifle. He's got a 30 out six Remington 710 with glass for 225 bucks, and it's not in bad condition. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm thinking, God, this might be the way to go. Now, odd six, how far can we take that out to? 
It'll because do. you can get the odd yeah. six rifles for the same price as the 308s when you're looking at them on the store shelves, you know? You can actually just odd six, 308, and they're this ba for lack of confusion here, they're the same damn thing. Okay. You know, range and distance of 30 odd six is a tiny bit better, but not enough to really say much. The thing 30 out 6 has in its favor is it'll take lighter bullets and heavier bullets better than 308. Is the odd 6, and I should know the answer to this, is 30 out 6 going to give you an advantage when you're hunting? Uh, more takedown power, more energy at no. 300? No. Because I'm debating yeah. if I ever want to go 30 out 6 because I'm going to be looking at more expensive ammo um, or do I want to yeah. just stick with 308 and get something new? Because I mean for 100 bucks more, I can get a new budget 308 well, for 150 bucks more, for about 350, 375, I could get a 308 with glass. Nah, the, the knockdown is so damn marginally different that until you get up to like, you can stub a 250 green bullet in 30 out six if you're hunting. You know, I'm just thinking deer, white tail, muleys. Like you know, that. yeah. Well, and obviously, when you use a quality hunting ammo too, you want to go with the right kind of bullet. You know, that's that's not a, not even a question. So, um. When it comes to longer range shooting, what kind of things do you need to keep in mind when it comes to your technique? What's what's important to remember? What is it that people tend to forget when they go out and do long range shooting? Breathe and, and squeeze. Needle. Exhale, pull the trigger. Yeah. And breathe and squeeze, man. Breathe and squeeze. You know, it's you know, exhale, squeeze that trigger. You know, it's and and, and finger placement is a big deal with me. That's one of the things I struggle with with, with handguns is um, where my where the pad of my finger is uh, on the trigger, I'm gonna push it or pull it. You know. Okay. Uh, the one thing that I would put out there for people is that if you're hunting an animal, don't aim at the animal. Don't aim at the animal's head. Aim at the animal's eyeball or his heart. You know, aim small, miss small. Yeah. Uh, and that just helps you to focus better. You know, if you're not aiming at center mass, if you're trying to pick out where his heart is at on the side of his body, and you're concentrating on that area, providing you can see that well, uh, you're less apt to miss than if you're just aiming at the side of the deer, hoping you're about in the middle. Yeah. The the one that I've read, and this is kind of interesting, what do you guys think about this? Uh, stay away from caffeine the morning that you go out and do your hunt. Oh, that's don't get yourself all jacked up. Mass murder. <laughs> well, yeah, that, like, that is definitely a way to, uh, you know, because I mean, I, I go on yeah. a rampage and take the whole world out. So that's not a good, <laughs> no, not not a good yeah. idea for me. <laughs> Just that it could affect your accuracy because you might be a little more shaky than usual. If you, if you put down a little more coffee than what you're used to, or I don't know, is there any little bits of, try to see if there's any advice, somebody who wants to get into it for the first time, just, I want somebody to go out there and get into long range shooting and not to break the bank, just go out there and have fun. Uh, just a little, fun, but I can't say it if children are around. <laughs> oh, is there some kind of code word you could use for it so we know what you're talking about? Mm. No, okay, we'll keep it. We'll keep it, G Ray. They're sensitive. There it, could be sensitive. Like the opposite. This morning, so. he's, he's talking. It's like the opposite of what you're supposed to do before the, the night, the day before you get into a boxing match, where you're supposed right. to hold all that in. Well, before you go hunting or whatever <laughs> the next day, you're supposed to just let it all out so okay. it's just nice and calm in the morning. Gotcha. Thank you, man. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. It also, to... it also is supposed to enhance your vision. So you're saying go oh do a gosh. yoga class? Go do a morning <laughs> yoga class before you go out? What are you talking about? Not messing with you, man. I get it. I get it. Yoga enhance class is a good place. Yeah. <laughs> yoga? You can yoga good class. Good place Where to some steam? Go, go do some Zumba <laughs> before you go out to the range that morning? Yeah? No, I, I hear you, man. All right. Wait a minute. That sounded bad. Okay. Uh, all right. We talked about. Hey, we talked about the spotter scope. I was thinking how it's important to have a spotter with you for your typical range trip. I think if you got some, if you know somebody that is an avid shooter that does a lot of hunting, it might benefit you to take that person along with you to have a spotter. I think it's going to save you some time when you're dialing in. Um, do you guys ever have any experience with that? You ever take anybody with you for take a spotter with you at all uh, when you do any kind of any kind of shooting? Just somebody to kind of to kind of help you out a little bit or not? I do not, and it is a lot of times a big pain in the ass when you're shooting a heavy recoiling rifle because you can't see where it's going when you shoot. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even know if you hit the paper the first time. It's like where to go, you know? So maybe having a spotter might be, the nice thing is in my range, you can request one. And I, I don't, I think it might be like a $10 fee and they'll sit out, sit out there with you on the berm as long as you want, help you get your gun dialed in. 
that would be a well spent ten bucks. Yeah, it's not. It's there's there's generally a range master there on site almost all day. There's a guy that's there, and you can just email and say, "Hey, I need I need a, a a spotter with me." And actually, the funny thing is, the guy that does this at the range I go to, he, I don't know if he does it anymore, but he was actually a tester for Horner Day, and uh, Hornady, and so he he would report a lot of ballistics information to them. So the guy is very good at what he does. He's a former Marine, and so if you know somebody that's got some experience, you know, bring them in and see if they can come with you out to the range and uh and help you out so i never wanted a spotting scope until i went to a shooting match and the guy <laughs> next to me had a spotting scope and he said i'll spot for you and instead of me having to uh go down range and look at the target or something like that he's telling me how to correct he's saying you're three inches left or you're two inches high oh, yeah. and i was able to keep the muzzle pointed down range stay on the stay on the rifle keep it in my shoulder keep the sling tight and adjust based on what he's telling me and i was able to correct a lot faster and it was a lot easier and after that i said i have got to get a spotting scope yeah but uh at my range they'll let you borrow them for free <laughs> so i haven't invested in one uh but it's definitely i think a good investment and if you have somebody if you put it on a tripod or something and you've got somebody looking through it and correcting for you it's going to save you time and uh, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable, but it's definitely something that if you're by yourself, you can still use it and adjust as necessary. Yeah. I mean, I I'll tell you, have, just make, go ahead, Tony. I, I actually have a cheap ass, like, uh, high school project telescope that I use. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's a really low powered telescope, maybe <laughs> 50 multiplication, maybe even 100. But, man, it looks good. Yeah. I, if you're going to get one, I would say don't skimp. I've got the Harbor Freight one that I tested. It's okay, but after a while there, it really starts to distort out beyond 300 yards. And so I would say get something. I, Me personally, I like Bushnell and Simmons, but, you know, maybe you want to save up a little bit more, go the BSA route or go Nikon, start to go up there a little bit. Before you retire, go buy yourself a Steiner. They're only like $6,000. Well, I can uh, tell you right off the bat, <laughs> uh, 20 power is not good enough for even 100 yards. Yeah. I got 20 power binoculars, and I can't see bullet holes. In yeah, you, you need to, if you want to go the spotting scope, right? If you're buying all these accessories and stuff and you're going out there, you need to spend a little bit of money and get some quality glass. That spotting scope, I mean, that's something you're going to use a lot. That's something you don't want to skimp on, you know? Matt, do you have a spotting scope? I guess I... NEA, do you have one or not? No, uh, I, I no? do not. Okay. I, have, uh, I have a friend that I take the range with me when I'm trying to dial something in. Well, now, when you move, you're going to need one now, obviously. Cause oh, you're yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Among other things. Hey, you also need to get a snowblower, too. I was going to tell you about that. Makes I don't care. You say, well, I got four kids. No, no, no. Scooping snow sucks. Yeah. I don't care what age you yeah. are. And you mess your back up. You feel it the rest of the day. I bought a snowblower when we bought our house. I said, I'm done. I'm done. Tell so, me, a snowblower is good insurance against blizzards for the most part. In the four-wheel drive. Man, we bought our house, and I didn't realize that the city doesn't plow the driveway in back of our house. We've got an alley that my garage is located in, and we had over – I don't even know why I'm talking about this. We had over a foot of snow, and if my Jeep wasn't in the garage, I wouldn't have gone to work that day because, <laughs> I mean, I would have been snow up to the doors. And so luckily I just bought the snowblower, you know, a couple couple, couple days before the first blizzard. And that, I got a nice big upright one that you walk with, like a 28-inch cut. Man, that makes life so much better. But anyway. Where, where uh, the hell do you live? Central Nebraska. We get everybody else's crap. We get the rain from the southeast. We get the Arctic weather from the north. We get the snow off the Rockies. We get the heat from the south. We get, we'll get three or four really good snowstorms a year uh, where we get about a foot of snow each time uh, and ice. I mean, my, my place, it literally can change. Within an eight-hour day, you can have all four seasons. I'm not kidding. Springtime and fall. Very interesting times to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I definitely you wouldn't think so, but we get we get big, heavy, wet snow, and you got to have something to throw it. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, because you got to clear I'm your waiting, sidewalk. So I'm waiting for that first chat after Matt steps outside up there. Oh, below no, I want to I want to see the wind. reaction of his children. <laughs> when I step out there, I'm gonna be walking out the door. <laughs> Matt, be, you're, I'm be telling the chats because that's all I'm gonna be doing is sitting in the house. Matt, you're going to love, you're going to love you. That first, like I said, the first fall morning when it's 50 degrees or 45 degrees, you walk outside, you feel alive, dude. I'm telling you. It's like, oh my God, this is fantastic. It was uh, 52 this morning when I took my dog for a walk. I had to put a stocking cap on. Uh, it's August. I mean, I, I, it's August. I, I, 
when I lived in the mountains, when I lived yeah. up in the Colorado mountains, it was yeah. I mean, middle of July, we would go skiing. You know what I mean? So you know, even on hot days in August, you'd wake up in the morning and there was frost on the ground. Um, so I'm out, oh, yeah. I've, I've done, I've experienced it before, but that was, that was a long time ago and I'm, I'm going to send you a, a winner. I know you got experience with that. I'm going to send you a winter survival list for stuff you need to add to your bug out box or stuff you need to add to your vehicles. You need scrapers. You need some, some press on windshield de-icer. You need a little bag of salt. You need yeah. a tow, you need a <laughs> tow rope. You need a four wheel drive now. You need a Kitty snowblower. Litter. Kitty litter Kitty is litter. a good one. I'll tell you, when we go on the road, I buy these big bundles of hand warmers at Walmart. They sell like the 20 packs of hand warmers that you crack and shake. I'll yeah. keep those and I'll keep a, a fleece blanket just in a bag in the back of my vehicle. Because if you get stuck on the interstate and they can't get to you, it's going to be a, your vehicle gets cold really quick when it's zero outside. So uh, that's something to keep in consideration, even if you don't yeah. think you're going to go anywhere. So one yeah. of the cheapies is a steel coffee can and a candle. Oh, yeah. Definitely, man. Definitely. All right, guys. I'm about to wrap it up here. Is there any other insight or wisdom that uh, you guys want to share about getting into long distance or long range shooting? Is there anything you guys can think of that we want to share with everyone? Like I said, hopefully we have some information for seasoned veterans. We have some information for people just getting into it. Um, what do you guys think? Anything Start else you want to share? With 22 long rifle and make your targets smaller and smaller at like 100 yards. Start with like uh something that's 10 inches around move down to five then move to like a golf ball then move to uh a shotgun shell and then keep going down in size go to like a lego brick is the ultimate test yeah you know you want to do it the right way you don't want to go out there with just a 12 inch paper target and put it out at a thousand yards and think you're going to be the next marine sniper you know you need to you need to ease into it because i don't want to because there's times i've gone out to the range and i've burned through so much ammo trying to figure out what's wrong with my gun and i wasn't doing it the right way you just want to do it the right way the first time you know well, you got to be realistic too because i mean yeah, you know, some yeah. people just i mean under just just understand you know that it, it, depending on how much you go practice and what you do it can it can literally take years to get good enough to you know hit something at a thousand yards you know yeah. of of any you know significant size or whatever exactly um, that's not the side of a barn so yeah. just yeah. be patient it's a it's a long term <laughs> skill that it takes a while to learn and that's not even to say I know how to do it but just I'm just saying oh yeah if you're thinking of long range hunting, just fucking don't because that's unethical. It's all hell. I mean, because you, you, well, when you say when you say long range hunting, are you talking beyond 500 yards? What What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm talking like trying to take okay. down a deer at a thousand. Uh, unless you've got the gear for it, and you know you've got the muzzle energy at the end of that at the end of that distance, and you know what you're doing. I I agree. I agree. I mean, I, when I drop a deer, I want it to happen as quickly as possible, and I want it to be done. I don't want the deer to have to run off 300 yards. I don't want to see it bleed out. I want to see it make it to the river and float away. I mean, you want to drop it as quickly as you can, you know? I don't have any problem with somebody hunting, you know, and taking one down at four or 500 yards. That's yeah. well within the range of most, at least 30 caliber center fire stuff. But Yeah, yeah. That extreme long range stuff for hunting is just, no, don't do it. Yeah. Well, All isn't right. there some yeah. game though that that's like that's pretty common on what they do? I mean, I I don't know what what distances it, we're it, kind of talking about here, but like my my yeah. cousin goes out elk hunting and he's described it as you go to the top of like you know one mountain not, and you shoot the yeah. elk on the top of the other mountain, and then you spend the rest of the day hiking it down. Yeah. So I don't know how far away he is when he's doing it, but. I know Ge he's, he's an avid hunter and an avid, yeah. you know, what Tony's talking about, you know, as far as, like, respecting the animal and all that stuff. So I doubt he's doing anything that's, like, crappy, you know. Oh, no, no. that's. But, I mean, like, the guy who, who's got his 243 and he's going to try to hit that deer at 700 yards because he can see it through his glass, you know. I'm just thinking of stupid things Nebraskans would do. Here, I mean, the thing is, here, I could go down to the Platte River where it's all wooded. And I could take my game within 75 yards with my 30-30. Or I can go north and go up on the open prairie in the sand hills, and I could shoot out to five, six, seven hundred yards uh, if, I've, if I'm on private land and it's, these, these are huge acreages. So I think it just a lot of it depends on your geography, big part of it, and what you're shooting, what, what caliber you're shooting too. So, yeah. 
All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up uh, over on the gun channel side. I want to thank Patrick and Jake for joining in today. You guys are awesome. Over on the YouTube side, we had a bunch of guys coming and join in later. We got Rock Humper showing up, Scott Pacini's there, Zinger, 04 Hemi, uh, Ghost Tactical joined us today. And see if anybody coming at the end here. Grim90 was with us uh, pretty much the whole time. Deuce Driver 610. I think I saw Doug DA pop up too. Maybe I was seeing things. Uh, yeah, Scott Pacini, Nebraska sounds a lot like New England. You only get three feet of snow and out of one good storm. Oh, we'll get three or four storms a year, but you never know when. We've had snowstorms hit us, hit us in April, so yeah. Cool, cool. Panel, guys, do you want to say anything before we take off? Um, Tony, would you like to say anything before we head out today? Uh, just that since I bought this damn four-wheel drive Suburban, we ain't had snow to need four-wheel drive. <laughs> All right. I've had it for years. All right. Well, let's hope this winter you get a chance to, to test it and play around with it. I love driving through the snow. It's a lot of fun, man. Unless I got to actually be somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Check out the early watch or and or good morning gun channels on gun channels and YouTube and wherever the hell we might be. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are not weekday, on yeah. most weekday mornings starting at ten or ten thirty or somewhere in there eleven, depending on what time zone you're in heck yeah and, and i know we're preaching to the choir here but those of you out in the chat if you're not on gun channels just go over and join it is the coolest thing in the world you can go there you can ask an honest question in the chat you're going to get a good answer you know we like to play around with each other but if you're new it's it's awesome i absolutely love it it is the coolest place just to meet people we all have a lot in common and it's neat the relationships you can develop out of it just firearms enthusiasts and supporting each other and that's that's why i love gun channels man it's just it's awesome uh squib you want to add anything man what do you want to say uh, thanks for having me. Thanks everybody for tuning in on a Saturday morning. Oh yeah. And uh, lock and load Monday nights, eleven Eastern. That's about it. Awesome, awesome, cool, man. Well, you have a safe trip, and uh, you take care, all right, man. We'll talk to you later. Yep. All right, see you, man. Uh, Smeggy, anything you want to add at all before we uh, before we call it? Yes, absolutely. Um, Go ahead, man. I am going to start up a lobby here over on Gun Channels right when this ends. Okay. So if everyone wants to come over to the lobby, jump in, talk, and I'll, I'll let it run all day. I'm just have my computer on. So. Well, and you're a fantastic co-host, and you're the sound technician for, for what show again? You provide the uh, the music for... Oh, what the hell is the name of that stupid thing? It's, it's Shooting and Missing. No, uh, yeah. it's... It's never enough cheaper than dirt. No. Smeggy and the Jets. Tuesday night. Smeggy and the Jets. Jonas, the one who strikes at night. Something, something about hitting or missing on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock central. Is that right? <laughs> See, that just don't sound right. It's Tuesday nights at o'clock. <clears throat> Tuesday nights at eight o'clock central. Well, also, uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to be a plug <laughs> for here. So, uh, yeah, yeah, do I it, man. If you, if plug this away. is actually, uh, you know, selfless. So, you know, that makes it even more awesome. Do but it. I don't know if you guys saw G Webs was on Hank Strange podcast last night. They talked for about two hours. It was a really good oh. chat. Oh. So go go no, check I that out and uh yeah, there you go. G Webs has then, a lot going on, man. You guys need to check out his channel. He's don't we have the gun show loophole tour coming up? Yep. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he, was, yeah. he was saying he's got the old West playing cards are all, oh. all lined up and ready to go. And That's going to be awesome. I forgot about I mean, I'd forget about them, but, you know, it's been a couple months that so we found out they're going to be released soon. Aren't they coming out in September? Uh, uh, I, don't know the time, I don't know the time on it for sure. I just know okay. he said he's got all the artwork with the printer and, like, it's, it's moving forward well. And so they should be getting printed here pretty soon. Fantastic. I don't, I don't know exactly the... what time. Guys, and then you got to figure know, it's yeah. going to take time to put all the – patches together and ship them out and all that whatever but sweet awesome have them by christmas for sure make perfect oh God, yeah i'm kicking myself for not buying two sets now i'm like God, why did i do that uh midnight range tm man what do you want to share with us anything you want to say before you go um on this topic i think you know the biggest thing is to to find something that makes you let you calm down a little bit you know i like to listen to a little music um while i'm shooting long um i put some earbuds underneath my earphone my headphone or my uh, my earmuffs and and play some calm music and and it's nice it's nice and relaxing uh it on is, the self yeah on the self promotion bullshit um you know come and subscribe so that way when i do get a chance to do some videos you guys can check them out um leave some comments and uh and suggestions if you want um you know if you guys want to see anything you know if there's anything i can do uh food wise or gun wise you know uh, give me a yell thanks 
Very cool. I'm going to put a link in the comments of this video for your channel for people to come check your channel out. Definitely get that taken care of so we can get some get some uh, some viewers out there on your channel. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm bouncing between four screens here. Matt, what would you like to say, man? Anything you want to plug? Any final, any parting words at all? Uh, you know, gunchannels.com, Guns and Geeks podcast, Never Enough Ammo on YouTube. And everybody out there, go do me a favor and go hit up our friendly neighborhood, Travis P11 on Patreon. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, we got the Patreon side. A lot of us have Patreon accounts. Get out there and support it. Um, it's 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 very nice. Uh, it's it's yeah. It's one of the few things that's going to start making up that ad revenue as soon as uh, YouTube screws us over. So as if they haven't already. <laughs> yeah. Well, I haven't been nailed exclusively yet, but so real quick, man. Have they demonetized videos? Is that what the deal is? No ad revenue they, now on. They classify them as um, non advertiser friendly and therefore depending on the content and it's just at their will it can either have restricted advertising in other words basically for for channels like ours it would be nra uscca places like that that are still willing to put up ads on quote unquote restrictive content okay uh, for gun people or it can just have no ads at all and they don't tell you which they just tell you this video has been hit so either it has restricted ads that don't pay anything they pay literally like maybe five cents on the dollar compared to other ads. Um, or it can just have no ads at all. So You won't really know until you start seeing the viewers to see if it's even bringing in revenue. So you're kind yeah. of sitting there waiting and the whole time you're losing revenue because we all know that our videos are so cheap to produce. Uh, yeah. Um, well, ammo on grows it. on trees, so it's totally easy to make videos. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's, I love doing it. It's a passion, but it's, it's my only hobby. It is making the videos and going out and shooting. Cause I really can't afford to do anything else. Well, you know, in I'll terms of you, hobbies and some, stuff like that. Some food does grow on trees and it's still fucking expensive to do videos. <laughs> Truffles, anyone? <laughs> no doubt, man. Awesome. AWAG, anything you want to, you'd like to, any parting words before you go, man? Any, any words of wisdom or anything else you'd like to plug before we call it? Uh, you can check out my channel, AWAG1000. The picture is the back of my Toyota Supra. Uh, I do gun, car, and various other videos. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, so check out my channel. I haven't set up a Patreon account, and I haven't set up ad revenue yet. Because, I don't know why. I, don't, I guess it's how many subscribers I have. So go subscribe there. So at 100 subscribers, I might, I don't know, shoot something and make it explode. I don't know. There you go. There you go. Cool, man. Get that super roadworthy, and then you can come out here, and we'll go shoot all day. All right. We'll do. <laughs> Definitely stretch up legs on that bolt action, man. See what it can do. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. All of them. All right. Okay, guys. So this was Caliber Corner number 11, the basics of long-distance shooting. I want to thank you all for joining me today. We had a good time today. Uh, again, check out all of our channels. Get over to gunchannels.com. And we'll see if we're going to have an episode next Saturday. Again, I have family coming to stay with me, so we'll see what happens. Um, Otherwise, if not, we'll be back in two weeks, too. So, guys, this was Caliber Corner number 11. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend, a good start to the weekend, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.